Remember last Sunday, Patricia said? We found a T-Rex in Grandpa's shed. I certainly do, said Pip with a smile. That was the best day I've had for a while. Let's get our bikes then, Patricia said, and ride to his house and go back in his shed. Could we, said Pip? Do you think he would mind? It would be amazing. Who knows what we'd find? At Grandpa's house, they again stood before the old, old shed with the broken door, with vines on the roof and weeds in the floor. It was where Grandpa kept his dinosaur. Today, the old door was open so wide, they stood in the doorway and peered inside. From the shadowy shed, there came a strange sound. Someone was in there, walking around. They looked at each other, then back in the shed. Who could be in there? Their hearts filled with dread. They backed away slowly, their eyes on the door. The footsteps drew closer, and that's when they saw... Grandpa! Grandpa came staggering out of the shed, carrying boxes piled up to his head. Girls, is that you? He called over the pile. I'm so glad you're here. Can you help for a while? Of course we can, Grandpa, Patricia replied. Taking some boxes, she walked by his side. Follow me, girls, and take care not to fall. We're off down the back to the old garden wall. Down the old pathway, mulberry trees loomed. Over the archway, wisteria bloomed. Past the old clothesline with billowing sheets and the strawberry patch full of juicy red treats. At last they arrived at the old garden wall, where a black and white cat sat and glared at them all. Oh no, said Grandpa, off you go. Shoo! I didn't build this as a toilet for you. Take a look, girls, said Grandpa with pride. They saw a new sand pit, quite deep and quite wide. Is this for us? asked Patricia with awe. I've never seen such a big sand pit before. Well, it's really like this, Grandpa said, looking down, as he put all his boxes in line on the ground. Your grandma says I have to clean out my shed. Don't really know why, he said, scratching his head. She told me last week that it all has to go, but I wanted to keep things I found long ago. So I invented and researched and carefully planned and came out and built this big pit full of sand. He opened a box and took something out, an old metal teapot with filigreed spout. He placed on its lid as it sat in his hand, then carefully positioned it down in the sand. He said, come on girls, let's get everything in. There's lots more to go, he said, grinning a grin. They worked all afternoon, bringing load upon load, until all Grandpa's treasures were carefully stowed. The sandpit was brimming with treasures untold. There were statues and teapots, all terribly old. There were mirrors and ornaments shiny and bright, and goblets and glasses, a wonderful sight. What happens now? asked Patricia, perplexed. Ah, said her grandpa, watch what happens next. From out of his pocket he pulled a control. He was seconds away from achieving his goal. He pressed the red button, shiny and round, then out of the pit came a gurgling sound. The sand! It was bubbling! The girls were amazed. Grandpa stood smiling, completely unfazed. Patricia, white-eyed, reached out with her hand and plunged it right into the bubbling sand. It felt sort of like water, but not really wet. This was the strangest thing she had seen yet. Look, shouted Pip, mesmerized too. The treasures were slowly sinking from view. After a moment, as Grandpa had planned, all they could see was the bubbling sand. Grandpa held out the control in his palm and pressed the blue button. The sand became calm. All of his treasures were safely concealed down in the sand pit with sand as a shield. Later that night, in a sound dreamy sleep, both of the girls dreamed of a sand pit so deep a remote control lying in Grandpa's old hand and treasure beneath the bubbling sand.